Hello and welcome back. Today I'm going to be watching the video and reacting to five ancient mysteries we still haven't solved. This is by Side Projects and I like this host. Um, this, I mean, came out pretty recently and you know, everything that I enjoy, you know, history, geography, um, mysteries, ancient mysteries especially, uh, is right down my alley. And I'm just curious to see what still is out there that we haven't solved, especially with our, you know, our knowledge today and our technology and our information sharing, all that. So let's just jump right in and see what these mysteries are. What don't we know yet in, in such an advanced society? Let's, uh, let's find out. Let's find out. Maybe you have the answer. Let me know. History gives us context and helps us understand how we got to where we are today or why a historical event happened the way it did. How little changes here or there could have resulted in massively different outcomes. Of course, that really only works yeah. if we know what actually happened. Unfortunately, there are many historical events where the records that could tell us exactly what happened are either gone or hidden away. Being lost to history is a real concern, which is partly why universities have such massive libraries with tons of obscure documents documents to catalog everything so that we don't lose anything again. Of course, anything that was lost before they were catalogued is basically unrecoverable. Even so, that doesn't stop historians and archaeologists from trying, and since the Industrial Revolution, there's been a concerted effort to patch up the gaps in the historical record as best we can. With that in mind, we've got five ancient mysteries that, even today, we still haven't fully solved, and without further ado, Let's get into them. Yeah, let's do it. Let's do it. So curious, what, what are these things? The first mystery in today's video is not a strange event or a lost city, but a person about whom the only thing we know with absolute certainty is that he existed. Zoroaster, also known as Zarathustra, was a man who lived in what is today eastern Iran. Born to nomadic parents, he supposedly became a priest as a young man before he had a divine revelation at the age of 30. We won't bore you with the extensive theological details here, but what he learned from this revelation would eventually become the basis for the religion known as Zoroastrianism, famous. I don't even know if I've even heard of him before or this religion. Unless it melds into something else coming up. We might practiced by the ancient Persians and the not so ancient Freddie Mercury. But it's not just powerful empires and world famous that musicians true? that illustrate Zoroaster's that reach. Tenets of Zoroastrianism are believed by some historians to have influenced other religions, including the Abrahamic faiths of Judaism, Christianity, and Islam. Okay, Incredibly, that, Zoroastrianism is thought. still practiced in parts of Iran and India today, making it one of the oldest contiguous religions on earth. So, Zoroaster and his theological ideas were, in historical terms, a really big deal. So what else do we know about him? And the answer is, well, not much at all. Don't we have a yeah, maybe that's why I haven't, and maybe you haven't heard of him. Have you ever heard of him before, the, the religion? That's, I mean, it seems really important to, uh, I don't know, maybe, maybe learn about him with him spanning into other religions or aspects of his himself or his religions going into uh, modern day religions. A decent picture of Zoroaster's religious ideas, the man himself is almost as legendary as the gods he spoke of. Historians don't know exactly where he was born or even when. The more orthodox historical conclusion is that Zoroaster lived at around the same time as Cyrus the Great, founder of the first Achaemenid Persian Empire, which would put his life at around the 7th century BCE. But Cyrus has wow. a few historical blank spots too. You see, around this time, history has as a profession was less about actual facts and information than it was about telling a good story. Hence why the Persian Empire is often viewed as despotic and tyrannical, even though they were actually, as the technical term goes, pretty chill. The bad reputation chill. we get from the Persian Empire comes largely from Herodotus, a Greek historian who, despite being called the father of history, included many obvious legends in his historical writings, which means that you can't take the source solely at its word, and you have to split hairs to find out what's real and what isn't. As such, with both Cyrus and Zoroaster, it's difficult to disentangle the legends surrounding these two with the actual historical facts, which is a tendency you will notice a lot if you study study ancient history. Case in point, here's a drawing of Cyrus the Great with wings. With that in mind, some scholars think that Zoroaster could have lived as far back as the 6th millennium BCE. That's some serious guesstimation there, but it really is the best we can do with the information that we have available. If we want to know more, we'll probably have to go to Iran to get it. 
and we're probably not going to do that. The Bronze Age collapse. Yeah, you don't really hear about you know how how the ages kind of collapsed, I guess, if if you will, and even even like the dark periods. I mean, I, I guess that's the reason why it's called that, but it's just so un until what the Renaissance did. The Renaissance take us out of the the dark periods. If I'm could could be off, but um, I'm sure there's a whole bunch more in between. But uh, you don't hear much about that, and it's just fascinating. The next Why entry in this video is one that if you've watched any history channels on YouTube, you're probably quite familiar with. It's the Late Bronze Age Collapse. Now, we won't spend too much time- I love history and I've never, I mean, may maybe I've seen something like this, but I've never watched anything about this Bronze Age Collapse. I don't know, I don't know why. I'm on this one because there Surprised. are- billion videos about the Bronze Age collapse that go into far more detail than we could in a couple of paragraphs. So with that in mind, Oops. we'll just give you the Cliff Notes version and then you can dive into, into a video and watch about the this. Bronze Age collapse somewhere else. Why would you want to do I that? Am. Well, probably because it's one of the greatest mysteries in history. So here's the deal. In the year 1200 wow. BCE, there were several huge empires in the Eastern Mediterranean and Mesopotamia. You may recognize okay. the names of some of them, the Hittites, the Babylonians, yes, the Mycenaeans, yes. Greeks, and so on. These empires were large, populous, and powerful. 50 years later, they were gone. According to archaeological evidence, almost every single major city in the eastern Mediterranean was violently destroyed, many of them never to be occupied again. So what happened to them? Mm -hmm. The most powerful states on the planet? And we don't know. Well, when we say we don't know, what we really mean is we don't know for sure. Progress has since been made in researching the Bronze Age collapse, and historians have settled for now on something known as the Systems Collapse Theory. Basically, everything just stopped working all at the same time. It would be like the internet going out, then the TV, then all of the Starbucks close, and that causes the world to collapse overnight, especially the Starbucks thing. There were probably famines, Weird. natural disasters, tin shortages, tin being a necessary component of bronze, which makes it vital resource for, you know, the Bronze Age. In addition to this, there is a good deal of evidence for a group of people that historians refer to rather blandly as the Sea Peoples. A lot of information about them is still shrouded in mystery, but here's what we know for sure. First, they were an ethnically diverse confederation of peoples originally from the Western Mediterranean. Second, they migrated via sea to the Eastern Mediterranean. It just looks like, especially the bottom row and how, like, the art... I mean, it's all, you know, Egyptian. Everything's Egyptian on here. <laughs> Fighting, I don't know. I'm trying to take a good look at this. Like the Greeks and stuff? They either to find wealth or to escape hardship in their original homes. And third, they were really good at winning wars. It's not known for sure how much of an impact they had, but there is historical precedent for armies of unified groups conquering vast swaths of territory and yeah. annihilating entire towns. That's what I would Thinking guess for you, this. Genghis Khan, and well, speaking of Genghis Khan... Weird. So yeah, th that's what I would have guessed just straight off the bat of... Uh... You know, a conquer uh, 50 years, I don't know, that's a pretty long time. So, especially back then, I mean, you could have this group of, you know, th th these nations group up or something, uh, this powerful nation, and just kind of wipe through those areas because they're all, I don't know, kind of close-ish. So, that's what I would guess, but a little economic collapse. I, I don't know if that would destroy these three powerful areas in, you know, 50 years. I'm gonna watch a video on that. I'm very interested. Genghis Khan is remembered this is as very history's too. greatest conqueror. He unified the disparate nomadic tribes of Mongolia into a unified force of unmatched warriors and then led them on a military campaign across the Eurasian continent, conquering the steppes of Central Asia, Northern China, and Northern Persia. His successors would go on to continue his conquests, creating the largest land empire in history and conquering lands in Russia, the rest of China, and the Middle East. Wasn't he like one of the most like brutal conquerors just like devastated who he went through i just heard i don't know if it's about genghis i know there's like a long line of them um but yeah I, I thought there was something along those lines if he was the most you know devastating um to people and cultures and cities and stuff like that let me know let me know um what that's all about least. Descendants of Genghis would famously create their own empires, including Timur and Babur, who founded the Timurid and Mughal empires respectively. Nobody is immortal, at least not yet. 
still waiting on that scientists come on and as such genghis khan died in august of the year 1227. we don't know exactly how he died could have been illness injuries from hunting killed in battle or simply passing away quietly in his sleep his body was taken back to mongolia where a giant mausoleum was constructed as his tomb becoming a place of reverence for mongols everywhere a fitting resting place for the great khan at least it might have been if that's where he was actually buried because this mausoleum isn't yeah. actually genghis khan's resting place it's a memorial but it's not a tomb so where was genghis khan buried to put it simply no idea genghis khan requested for his body to be buried quietly without any markings or signs since you don't disobey the great khan even when he's dead he still might get you that's exactly what was done his body was returned to mongolia after his death and the best guess that we can make from there is that he was returned to kenti in the east of the country where he was born and that he is buried somewhere close to the onon river and that's really the best we can do without yeah, in Mongolia too, there's this whole, you know, forbidden zone that's kind of watched by, I don't know, a certain group uh, or so um, to just enter this forbidden area of M Mongolia. And there's this huge mountain that they think is this sacred mountain that they think he might be buried on as well. There's also other theories. They just, you know, put him in a river or something like that. There's all sorts of, you know, theories because like you said, we have, we have no idea. Turning up every square foot of dirt in Mongolia looking for the guy. According to legend, 2,000 people attended his funeral, who were then killed by one of his armies, who were then killed by his escort, who then killed everyone they found along the way, who then committed suicide when all was said and done. Now, in terms of historical authenticity, that maybe, probably, isn't what actually happens, but we... I, I just heard, maybe not that extreme, but I heard the people, you know, that kind of buried him were, um, yeah, kind of like executed, so no one knew where he was actually buried. You get the gist that Genghis wanted his body to be hidden away from the world after he was dead, which is an oddly humble end for a man who wrote himself into history with so much blood and conquest. Yeah. Much like where he is buried, we can only speculate about his intentions. Going back about a millennium, we come to the Roman Empire. Rome is the time period where history starts becoming less messy. There's no winged Cyrus the Great to pick apart or anything like that. There were still legends, but at least compared with ancient history, it's relatively easy to separate them from historical fact. But Roman history yeah. still has its breaks. One of the most head-scratching is the ultimate fate of the Ninth Legion. The story of the Ninth begins with Julius Caesar, who inherited the Legion when he became governor of Cisalpine Gaul, today's northern Italy. Caesar led the legion throughout the Gaelic Wars and the Roman Civil War. After Caesar won that civil war, he disbanded the legion and settled the veterans in the Italian countryside. But those veterans were later recalled by Caesar's adopted son Octavian to fight another civil war and make him into the emperor we know today as Augustus. The legion spent some time flitting around between Spain, Germany, Macedonia, all over the place really, before it was finally stationed on the island of Britain. The Legion was present during oh. Boudicca's rebellion in 61 CE, where it suffered a disastrous defeat against her. Afterwards, the Legion was reinforced, but the string of bad luck continued when, in the year 82 CE, the Roman general Agricola had them invade Caledonia, a mythical and legendary place of wonder and magic known today by the name of Scotland. Long story short, the Caledonians yeah. nearly destroyed the Legion in a surprise nighttime attack, but the men fought them off and later won a resounding victory at the Battle of Mons Graupia. With the another victory under their belts the men of the ninth returned to roman territory where they promptly disappeared from the historical records and that's really it we have no idea what happened to them after agricola's invasion there is one stone tablet which states that the ninth were present at york rebuilding a fort in the year 108. after that they're just not mentioned ever again there are inscriptions of them afterwards that were found in the netherlands but some scholars argue that these were just detachments of the ninth rather than the entire legion itself so what happened to them the most dramatic telling is that the ninth marched once more into the caledonian frontier where it was never heard from again this theory of annihilation in northern britain was thought to be supported by the discovery of a damaged roman eagle sculpture in the town of silchester which was believed to possibly be the eagle standard of the ninth That's legion cool. unfortunately we have to do our due diligence and let you viewers know that some archaeologists think that this eagle is just scrap metal and has nothing to do with the ninth legion stupid historians taking the fun out of absolutely everything <laughs> yeah i mean I, do you have for any of these do you guys have a theory for any of them or, or something that you've heard of because these are all i've heard you know 
you hear a lot of different theories for all of these that we're, we're talking about now and listening to. Um, I mean, I wonder if they could have just, you know, been disbanded and that was kind of that and they just went home or they settled in, you know, Britain um, or even you know, other places or they maybe they got on a huge shipwreck. I don't know. Going through the sea, going back to going back to Italy. I don't know. Um, anything, because uh, like you said, during the Roman times, that's where they would they definitely started to document, you know, everything like way more than ever before it seemed like i guess the greeks did as well but there's a lot that we could learn from them and they're in tablets and all the stuff that we we could learn now and then from there on out it was much better for us much easier but the fact that they there's like no more mentions about it it's pretty crazy another theories for what happened to the knights include destruction in judea during the second jewish revolt against the romans 132 to 135 while yet another offers that the ninth was destroyed by the parthians during the reign of marcus aurelius but these theories are not airtight and there's a lack of evidence that the ninth was even in the eastern part of the empire during these two time periods. Whatever the case, we know for a fact that around the year 200 CE, the Ninth Legion did not exist, as it is not included in two independent but identical lists of the 33 existing legions at the time. So for now at least, wow. what ultimately became of the Ninth Legion is just lost to history. Yeah. As one historian so succinctly put it, further evidence is needed before more can be said. Yeah, it's just a guessing game right now. These ones are pretty Our last weird. entry in the video today takes us to South America and to the country yeah. of Peru. In 1553, a Spanish conquistador published a book that described a set of trail markers in southern Peru, high on an arid plateau in the Nazca Desert. Although they were visible from nearby hills, it wasn't until the 20th century that airplane pilots flew over them and people realized that they were far more than just trail markers. The Nazca Lines are a group of huge geoglyphs created somewhere between 500 BCE and 500 so weird. Well, that's a big range, but given the lack of written records for Andean cultures, it's just our best guess. The vast majority of the lines are simple geometric shapes, but many of the glyphs depict various designs of plants and animals. They're quite aesthetically pleasing on their own, but what's even more impressive with these designs is how they were created. And how they did it is gonna shock yeah. you. They were created quite simply by drawing lines in the sand and exposing different colored sand underneath. And I know what you're thinking, Simon, that's lame. <laughs> What's the big deal about these sand lines? You know what's not lame though is that the fact that they're made so long ago and they're still very you know, easy to see. There's I don't know how how have they not like eroded? I don't know. I don't. I guess I need to look for myself. Lines and first of all, viewer. You're lame, just kidding. We love you, especially since you're this far along in a video. Second, what's absolutely amazing about these lines is that even though they're nothing more than drawings on the ground, they've existed for more than a thousand yeah, years at the earliest. It's crazy. That's insane. And that's insane because there are- And it's just so easy to see. They're not like partially, you know, the, the foot's not missing or whatever. It's just, I don't know. Looks like a Pokemon too. All right, let's, let's go. Zapdos. Barely buildings that last that long. The second secret behind their preservation is the incredibly okay. stable climate of the plateau that they're located on. There's no wind, no rain, no natural erosion. Walking oh. here is like walking on the moon. Your footprints will be there basically forever. In Dang. fact, if you want to visit the Nazca lines in person, you will be required by the guides to put on special shoes to ensure that you don't mess up the delicate ground. As we said before, some of these inscriptions are absolutely enormous. Many of them made from one continuous continuous line with the largest one around 370 meters long. What that means is that these weren't created by some bored guy with nothing better to do. Uh, probably. I mean, stranger things have happened. It's more likely that the creation of these lines was an organized effort by a large group of people using a lot of maths, which begs the question, well, why did they do it? Why create these glyphs and why make- I mean, I always go back when you think of someone a civilization so long ago is just you know who they worship um who their gods are um and maybe they're trying to appease them i, I don't really know I, I can imagine many other explanations for this uh, i'm sure there's a lot of theories out there but that that's just kind of what i always go to when something's just like a little like a little odd a little strange like this Maybe they saw UFOs and wanted to communicate. I don't know. 
make them so Who large knows? to the point that nobody even knew where they were until the invention of Maybe the they're trolling us nowadays. And look, you know the drill by now. We just don't know for sure. That's In general, wild. this is such a disappointing video for people who like want answers. In, but then why did you crazy. click on this video? In crazy. general, scholars believe that there's a religious significance behind the Nazca yeah. lines. Beyond that vague assertion, however, there really is no way to tell because of the aforementioned lack of written records. Some have hypothesized that they were created to be seen by deities in the sky. Others believe astronomy and constellations may have played a role, which, considering the existence of the Mayans, would not be implausible. Still others have posited that they may have even served as a kind of calendar for agricultural purposes. There are several more outlandish theories and explanations regarding the Nazca lines, but honestly, they're just really cool to look at. I mean, check out this hummingbird. It's pretty awesome. So there you have it, five ancient mysteries that we haven't yet been able to solve. While no doubt some of these, like the Nazca lines, yeah. will remain mysteries for the foreseeable future, historians are working on these. There has been an That's incredible cool. amount of progress made over just the last 20 years in regard to events like the Bronze Age collapse. Even as we speak, historians are no doubt making progress and piecing together the story of how we got here and perhaps very soon this list will have to be updated. Until then, thanks for watching. Remember to like, comment, subscribe. This list will not be updated for a long time. Maybe like one of them, but I just remember even as a kid, you hear about a lot of these. Um, you know, uh, Genghis Khan. Here we go. Ninth Legion. Didn't they make like movies out of this? Um, I feel like they have. And the Nazca lines, that's been around forever. I've never heard of number one. And number two, I mean, I know what the Bronze Age is, but I didn't know that there's, you know, this whole Bronze Age collapse. I uh, had no idea about that. It's pretty wild, though. It's just like if nowadays, you know, the top couple countries of the world just poof, just disappeared <laughs> within like 50 years. And then, I, don't, I, mean, I mean, it can't happen nowadays, but it's just kind of an example of back in the day of what would happen. Lesson from the Ninth Legion. If you, if you retire a bunch of veterans to farm and then recall them years later, don't expect them to do well. I mean, it seems like they're kind of hinting at that. They go fight someone way, far, far away from Rome and they just get wiped out and maybe Rome's just like, all right, what? Well, don't go there anymore. Don't go there anymore. And, you know, not much history came out of that. Simon's mighty beard of knowledge is turning into something glorious. That's what I thought. Like, right when I saw this, I'm like, wow. He just uh, let it go during uh, quarantine. And I, I like it. I like it. I like switching things up here. Yeah, Ninth Legion, we're tired of fighting. We don't want to be recalled again. Then disappears. That was one of my other theories. Just kind of... Maybe they did fight. Maybe they even lost a lot of people and they kind of just called it a day um, and then went into society. And maybe, I, I wonder even if there's like pockets of, you know, Romans or Italians that like the DNA testing, I wonder if there's just pockets around Europe somewhere where it's just like large pockets of Italians that are there. I'm sure there are. The Nazca lines is God doing Etch-a-Sketch. Yeah, I, it looks like it. I mean, that's a better Etch-a-Sketch than I've ever done. I think Genghis Khan didn't want people to know where, his, uh, where he was buried because he was probably afraid people would desecrate his rest place body. Yeah, I mean, probably. Especially someone that that is that, you know, after all that conquering, maybe cocky and he thinks he's a god now, maybe. I don't even know. Um, realizing that he's, in fact, a human and he's going to die. Yeah, I mean, it, it could be it could be anything. And I really like this host, so I'm glad he's on this channel, which I just found. So this is from Side Projects. I like the host, and I like these, these especially ancient mysteries. I mean, there's so many more mysteries that I'm going to go over and watch. This was, this was really good um, and very true. And like you said, historians are on it. They're, they're trying to figure these things out. And I, I think every year we kind of inch closer to the answer, but we'll probably never have you know clear answers but maybe like this is what we think happened when we're fairly confident that this happened but let me know what you think let me know if you have any theories like even if they're like way out there it can't not be solved that that's that's wrong or or correct it could be it could be correct so let me know what you think and i am going to find more of these these videos that are, are mysteries and want to have a conversation of uh what what you think and what you know because that's the cool thing about this, you know, I'm in California, 
I've I've seen these things, you know, on on TV or maybe maybe you have traveled to them just being other places of the world. You hear different things and you kind of like collaborate and, and talk about it of your experiences, what you what you've heard and stuff like that from different places of the world, which is very you know enlightening um, and informative. So let me know what you think. I want to hear about it and um, what other videos I should do about kind of mysteries or something like this. Um, the Ancients, I love, love these shows on TV. And until next time, thanks for watching and have a good rest of your day.